It's almost that time of the year, folks. E3 2019 is looming on the horizon. It's just a few days away, and there's going to be a lot of games there to show off. So, yeah. Press conferences begin on June 8th. The show floor itself opens from June 11th to June 13th. And as always, I'll be live streaming the press conferences alongside you guys, and then I'll be going to the show floor, get my hands on as many games as possible, and report back. But before we get to the event, I figured I should share with you guys some games that I think you should keep an eye out for. Now, do recall that Sony is not attending E3 this year, so games like Death Stranding, Ghosts of Tsushima, and Last of Us Part 2 will not be on this list. But there is just plenty of other stuff to look forward to, so without further ado, here are my most anticipated games of E3 2019. Let's just get my absolute most anticipated game out of the way, Cyberpunk 2077. Duh. There's no need to build up to the obvious. This game was announced all the way back in May 2012. It's been essentially seven years in development, though. Most of that time was spent in pre-production because a lot of the focus was on Witcher 3. But after they finished Witcher 3 in 2015, they went full throttle with cyberpunk development. And they've made a lot of progress since, as we saw in the E3 2018 gameplay demo that blew everyone's collective fucking minds. We still don't know when it's launching. The window is still still when it's ready, which I'm perfectly okay with, but I've been hearing rumblings that a lot about the game has changed since the last demo. In that year, they've made a lot of progress, and some things should be different from what we saw, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that's like. But I do expect that we're going to see a trailer for sure, and there's definitely going to be new gameplay. I was invited for a Behind Closed Doors presentation, so I'll be doing that on Wednesday, June 12th, giving my first impressions, and then the following day, hopefully by then, I'll do a play-by-play -play of everything that I saw. I'm going to take as many notes as possible. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'm wondering if they're going to announce a release date. I'm hearing rumblings that 2020 is the most likely prospect, and that's poetic given the tabletop takes place in 2020. It all kind of, I don't know, comes full circle or something like that. But either way, uh, this is a game that a lot of people are looking forward to. It's CD Projekt Red. They know what they're doing, and they take their time with their shit. And it should be interesting to see how much progress has been made over the course of a year and how many new details about the game itself we can get. Next up, we have the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Final Fantasy VII has a very special place in my heart. This is a game that I grew up with. It was my first Final Fantasy, and I think it's pretty much still my favorite Final Fantasy. The remake was announced back in 2015, and while there was a lot of excitement, I think there's also understandable trepidation given that this is such a beloved and valued game that they're kind of tweaking a lot and you have to wonder if this is all going to work out. But even with that trepidation, there's no denying that the graphics look gorgeous. Seeing these characters come to life with modern graphical fidelity, seeing all these scenarios that we remember from the PS1 days just pop out with incredible graphical fidelity, it, it's a sight to behold. It truly is. It, it's certainly very nostalgic. But the question is whether the shift to a more action-oriented combat system and whether the episodic nature will actually work, if it'll be something that fans will be receptive to. Either way, I want to see a lot more about this game. It's been in development for many years now. I think it's time for them to blow the lid wide open, show us like a playthrough of a section, and see how everything works. And hopefully, if they do show some kind of gameplay, it'll be footage that fans will be able to look at and say, oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. There's nothing to worry about. Another game that Square Enix is going to show off this year is none other than Marvel's Avengers. This is a game that is being developed by Crystal Dynamics. It was announced back in January 2017. And the Avengers need no introduction. Cinematically, it is probably the biggest franchise out there right now. We know how ambitious the films are, but to bring the Avengers into a full-fledged AAA game? Now that is an endeavor I'm very curious about that I'm hoping pans out. As of now, we know next to nothing about it except that it will be at E3 2019, but in the official website of E3, if you go to the E3 Coliseum segment, there is going to be a panel and there's a description about the game, and the description on the website reads as follows. Embrace your powers and join key members of the development team at Crystal Dynamics and the creative team at Marvel Games as they talk exclusively about the upcoming Marvel's Avengers. This is the defining Avengers 
first gaming experience, an epic action adventure that combines cinematic storytelling with continuous single player and cooperative gameplay. Moderated by Andrea Rene, assemble in teams up to four players, master extraordinary abilities, customize your heroes to fit your playstyle, and combine powers to defend an ever expanding world under constant threat. Synopsis is still pretty vague, but it gives us some ideas to the type of game this is. We'll have to wait and see what that looks like when Square Enix hosts their press conference. I'm expecting that's when we'll get an actual gameplay blowout. All we have for now is this like teaser trailer. It's cinematic. It doesn't really give us much of an idea as to how this game will play. One concern I've heard is the way they call it a continuous single player game. This has people thinking, does this have like life service elements? Hopefully that's not the case. The jury's still out on that one. But yeah, I mean, this game has the potential to become a dream come true for comic fans and it's the freaking Avengers. So hopefully they'll have all the usual suspects, the usual heroes. Hopefully their mechanics will be fleshed out. And I wish Crystal Dynamics nothing but the best. I hope this presentation will impress us. Moving along, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yes, I know this is an EA title, but it is being developed by Respawn, and I totally trust those guys. I mean, they did a fantastic job with the Titanfall series, Apex Legends was a big hit at launch, and Jedi Fallen Order, I think, has the potential to lift the EA curse of shitty Star Wars games. This game was announced back in April 2019. So far, we have only seen a cinematic trailer, so we don't know exactly how this game plays, but we do know it's gonna be sort of a linear action-adventure type of experience. I love the setup of this game, the fact that it takes place between episodes 3 and 4, the fact that it's all about Order 66 and you play as a Padawan who is being hunted down as a result of Order 66. So narratively, there's a lot of potential there and Respawn being involved gives me a lot of confidence in the gameplay itself because Respawn has a proven track record of making games that just play great and feel really good. And to top it all off, it's been confirmed that this is purely a single player experience with no microtransactions, no forced in multiplayer, none of that bullshit despite it being an EA title. So fingers crossed that this game delivers. We have waited so long for a proper new Star Wars game. I believe this has the potential to be it. Now here's a game that sort of was added to my list last minute, Watch Dogs Legion. So. Full disclosure, I've never been a big Watch Dogs fan. The first game I thought had a lot of potential, but when it came out, we all know what a disappointment it was. I think the second game turned out to be better, but it didn't catch my personal interest. I never got around to playing it. And from what I'm hearing, it's good, but it's not like earth shattering. I think Watch Dogs as a series can still go further. So enter Watch Dogs Legion which uh, Amazon UK leaked by accident. They published a listing for the game a little too early, and the synopsis in there read as follows. Play as anyone. Every individual you meet in the open world has a full set of animations, voiceover, character traits, and visuals that are generated and guided by gameplay systems. Shortly after this leak, Ubisoft just went ahead and confirmed the game. They updated the official Twitter page for Watch Dogs to feature the logo and to confirm that the title is, in fact, Watch Dogs Legion, and we we also know that it takes place in the UK, post-Brexit era, but the thing that compels me most is this system, this promise that you can play as any NPC. That's very ambitious, and I don't know right now if I should be thrilled or worried, because the mechanic itself sounds very interesting and intriguing, but I'm trying to think how this can be executed in a way that makes sense, in a way that doesn't feel like a gimmick, in a way that doesn't compromise the narrative. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, it is a synopsis that sort of turns heads, it certainly turned my head, and I'm very curious to see how this is all going to work. I'm actually kind of anticipating this game because of that synopsis alone. But whether it lives up to something that looks compelling or not, that is the question. And hopefully we'll get an answer that is a positive one once uh, Ubisoft showcases this game during their press conference. Okay, so this one's a bit of a curveball for a lot of you probably, but there is this game called Astral Chain that I'm really excited about. It's a brand new game from Platinum, one of the most underrated development studios in my personal opinion, and this is a Switch exclusive game. This is a game that I personally like to call Ice Climbers 2. <laughs> Joking aside though, seriously, I love Platinum. They've made games like Metal Gear Revengeance, Bayonetta, Nier Automata. When it comes to action games like that, they are at the top of the food chain. They are the masters at this kind of stuff. And this game right here, Astral Chain, I believe deserves way more attention. It's got this beautiful, 
wonderful cyberpunk aesthetic that I absolutely love, especially as a huge fan of the cyberpunk genre. And the action gameplay looks pretty insane with this system where you are controlling two characters who are like linked to each other and they do combos off of each other. It looks very unique. And this is just, it looks like everything you'd want out of a Platinum game. I'm 100% in. Which is why I hope that they show more of this at E3. I just want to bask in the visual glory that is this game. And also, all hail Platinum. Shifting gears back to role-playing games, we've got Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. So this game was announced back in March 2019. It's being developed by Troika Games and published by Paradox Interactive. If you're a gamer, you probably know about the original Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It is a cult classic. People love this game and many have thought that a sequel is long overdue. We are finally getting that sequel and based on previews that I've seen of people who saw bits of the game behind closed doors, based on snippets of gameplay we have seen so far. This really is starting to look like the sequel we have always wanted. We know that this game is aiming for a narrative focus where your actions have consequences. We know that choosing your clan is going to be a big factor in how the narrative plays out. Combat looks a lot more improved compared to the original game, which, you know, despite it having a cult following, there are rough edges around there in terms of gameplay. So an improvement there is a huge plus. And what little we have been shown of vampire powers, what little snippets snippets and glimpses we have seen look pretty damn dope. It takes courage to make this game. It's very ambitious. There's a lot to live up to. There's so many expectations when it comes to the vampire name, but I'm getting a lot of good vibes so far. I love the focus on the narrative RPG elements. I believe Chris Avalon is involved in this, which is a big plus. He's fantastic when it comes to narrative. He's well known. He's prolific in the industry for that. And I think it is safe to say we're going to see this game at E3 2019. I think we're going to get a more extensive look at the game itself. And I am praying that it uh, impresses. Another fantastic looking RPG comes from the folks over at Obsidian who are renowned for their RPG prowess. They announced back in Game Awards 2018 a game called Outer Worlds. And we're likely going to see more of it at E3. And yes, it is an Epic exclusive, which is unfortunate for PC players, but as far as the game itself is concerned, it really does look brilliant so far. From what we have seen in terms of gameplay, it definitely harkens back to old school Fallout, but with that unique Obsidian flavor, and I love the fact that you can travel between various worlds using your spaceship. That's a really cool addition. I think this game is going to be fantastic for people who miss the old Fallout because Bethesda's latest Fallouts have been somewhat disappointing. Fallout 4 was just, eh, it was okay. And then Fallout 76, we all know, was a complete disaster. Which is why this game right here, which seems to deliver on an experience that Bethesda might not be delivering on, looks so enticing for a lot of people. And do keep in mind this is a double A game, so it's probably safe to expect that it's not gonna be as big as Fallout 4 or some of the Bethesda games. It is uh, a, on a lower budget, but even still, as long as it has that deep narrative, as long as there is some exploration, as long as there is a proper, solid, compelling RPG experience there, even if it is on the shorter side, I'm gonna be all in on this. Next game I wanna talk about is called Dying Light 2. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It is developed and published by Techland Publishing. Looking back at the first Dying Light game, I thought it was a very solid experience that combined zombie survival with parkour was a really interesting mix. But at the same time, I felt like the foundation was a bit rocky, like in a sequel, maybe they can really nail exactly what they were going for, which is why I'm so happy to see that a proper sequel is actually happening. Already from what I've seen, the narrative seems to be a lot deeper with multiple branching paths. There's a lot of improvements made to gameplay, things like parkour and shooting mechanics and melee combat just look more impactful and more uh, tactile. The visuals really do look like a significant step up, and there seem to be a lot of dynamic elements in the world, much more so than the first game. Now, I spoke before about Chris Avalon and his narrative prowess. Turns out he's the narrative designer of this game. So on the narrative front, I already feel very optimistic. And yeah, all I need to see is just more of how everything works through continuous 
gameplay. The gameplay glimpse we saw at last year's E3 during Microsoft's press conference already sold me, so all they need to do this year is just show more, honestly. Speaking of sequels, let's talk about Doom Eternal, the next game on the list. This is being developed by id Software and published by Bethesda Softworks. This is definitely a game that a lot of people are excited about because the original Doom made such a big impact. People who grew up with the franchise felt like this was a proper adaptation of an old school shooter that's been properly translated into the modern day and age. We have already seen an extensive gameplay presentation. This was back in August 2018 during QuakeCon. And my god, this game basically takes what's already there in the original and turns the dials up. You know, from like a 7 to like an 11, it's wonderful. That's really all Doom needs to do, and now you have a bunch of cool new mechanics, new tools that the Doom Slayer can use to annihilate demons. There's a lot of cool new kill animations. The levels are much more expansive, and a lot of cool mobility options are at play now. This game's just got everything it needs to elevate the franchise, and I couldn't be happier. Hopefully, this is a game that's gonna keep on with that positive PR streak. Hopefully as we see more of the game, it'll only excite us more. And no doubt this game is going to be a major part of Bethesda Showcase at E3 2019. So yeah, looking forward to seeing more. Last game on my main list that I want to talk about is Baldur's Gate 3. And for people who haven't been keeping up with news, you might be wondering where the hell did you pull that out of? Well, okay, so this is a game that hasn't been announced yet, but there is a story behind it. You know Larian Games, the developers of Divinity Original Sins 2? One of the best PC games of all time, in my personal opinion. One of the best RPGs ever made. They recently updated their website to tease the following image showing a three, a third entry of some franchise. Now, the natural assumption would be that this is teasing Divinity Original Sin 3, but a Twitter user dug through the website source and what they discovered was that there were some lines of code there indicating that the logo was actually for a project called Baldur's Gate 3. And a few other lines indicate that all rights are reserved for Wizards of the Coast who are the owners of the DND world, which is where Baldur's Gate takes place in. So yeah, this is as good as confirmation that a Baldur's Gate sequel is coming, which is just holy shit. You know, you take one of the most iconic RPG franchises of all time, one of the most renowned role-playing game series, and combine that with one of the best RPG developers today, and what you have here is a match made in heaven. And given that the website was updated to show that 3 as we build up towards E3, I get the strong sense that E3 is where we can expect a proper announcement. I think this has the potential to be a show stealer. I love layering games, and then Baldur's Gate, it's freaking Baldur's Gate, Combine the two and holy fucking shit. Okay, so those are 11 games that I personally feel most excited for, but I do feel like I have to make a few honorable mentions. Personally, not a huge Halo guy, but I do know that a lot of people are interested to see where Halo Infinite goes, where that game takes the franchise, so that's a game to keep an eye out for. No doubt they're going to do a full unveiling during Microsoft's press conference. And then we have Nintendo. They have incredible showcases like Link's Awakening Remake, Link's Awakening being one of the few Zelda games I haven't played yet. They've got Bayonetta 3 on the horizon, Pokemon Sword and Shield, it's freaking Pokemon, people eat that up. Uh, a new Fire Emblem game, which I'm a big fan of, and of course, a new Animal Crossing, which is something that a lot of people have been asking Nintendo to make for Switch. It's just such a perfect fit. And I'll also give a bit of a shout out to the new Modern Warfare. It does look intriguing, specifically because of the single player aspect, the narrative elements. I'm more interested in playing the campaign. The multiplayer will have to wait and see what happens. Activision doesn't have a good track record when it comes to how they monetize the multiplayer modes of their games. I expect some shady shenanigans there, but if they can at least leave the single player mode alone and let that be a pure experience, I might actually consider getting a Call of Duty game for once. I haven't played one of these in a while because I've grown so out of interest, but uh, what they're doing here with uh, just bringing back Modern Warfare, I think a lot of fans are excited to see where it goes and 
keeping their fingers crossed that Activision doesn't ruin this somehow. Now, all of the games that I've talked about are things that we kind of already know about. No doubt there are going to be a lot of surprises that we're not going to expect. That tends to happen at every three. So I'm really looking forward to those as well. I wonder what they might be. So yeah, there you have it, folks. This is my own personal list. I'd love to hear what your list is for most anticipated games of E3 2019. And I'd love to hear what your theories are in terms of what surprises we can expect in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.